and good morning. We want to welcome you uh, for joining us online, and we hope you've had a good week and encourage uh, you all to have uh, a good week coming. Okay, who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you are mindful of me? that you hear me when I call is it true that you are thinking of me and how you love me it's amazing I am a friend of God I am a friend of God I am he calls me friend I am a friend of God I am a friend of God I am a friend of God He calls me friend Who am I that you are mindful of me And that you hear me when I call Is it true that you are thinking of me and how you love me? It's amazing, it's amazing. Oh, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name. 
When the sun's shining down on me When the world's all as it should be Blessed be your name Blessed be your name On a road marked with suffering Though there's pain in the offering Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out Turn back to praise When the darkness closes in Lord, still I will sing Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name
Good morning, Glad Tidings. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I know this has been kind of a different season for us, um, but I hope you've had a, a great New Year's and a great Christmas. Before we, before we go on, I truly believe that 2022 is going to be an amazing year, just like all the other years. Despite all the things that are going on in our world, God is still going to do a work amongst us. God still has great plans for our church, for Blenheim, and the world. So, despite all the things that are happening, don't lose heart. I know we're back online today. Hopefully, we'll be back in person next week. Just keep an eye on our, on our social media for updates on our service times and what we're doing. And if you're not part of our mailing list, you can visit our website at www.gladtidingschurch.ca and join our, our mailing list because we do send out weekly emails with updates on things that are going on in the church. <clears throat> Before we move on, I just want to take a, a moment. I just want to pray. We're going to pray for, for Jenny and thank God for all the work that he's doing in, in Jenny's life right now. And we're just going to pray for the rest of our, our service. So let's pray. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day you've given us. God, I thank you for everything you've given us and this new year that we have. And God, we know that this world is, is a crazy, crazy place right now. But God, we know that you still have a plan and that you're still active in our world. God, I pray that, that this year we'll see an end to this pandemic. God, that we'll see peace in our world and that we will see many, many more people come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And that we will see revolu a revolution in our, in our world. That we'll see revival in our, in our land. God, I thank you for all the, the healing work you've done with, with Pastor Eric's wife, Jenny, and and. Just all the great reports we've been getting these last few days. And, and God, I pray that, that you will just continue to heal her, to build her up. God, I pray, as I've prayed for, that you, you will encourage her spirit. God, that you would bring her home to her family, both her, her family family and her church family. God, I just, I pray that you would just continue your healing work. And God, we recognize that she is an example of, of just how much you love us because, because of the, the healing work you've done in her. And God, we just thank you so much for that. And God, we just thank you that we can see how prayer works and how miracles work and that miracles happen in our midst. God, I just pray for the rest of this service and for, for our message. God, that, that it would just touch our hearts and, and that it would build us up and encourage us. And help us to grow closer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So today's going to be a little bit different. Uh, today we have a message from our district, our new district superintendent, Jason Small. So I invite you just to, to watch this message. And uh, we hope it, it, it fills you and builds you up and encourages you. So God bless. Hi, my name is Jason Small. And it's great to be with you in your church this morning. Uh, I've just been elected as the new superintendent for Western Ontario District. I'm excited to be able to serve and to come alongside uh, our local churches. Just so you know that you're part of a bigger family. The Western Ontario District, there's some 350 churches. We have... Uh, uh, a number of our First Nations churches, a number of cultural churches, and, and four camps, actually, that we look after here in Western Ontario. So just so you know, you're part of a bigger family. And, and this week, we thought we would just come to you and share the good news of God uh, moving forward. We've been on this theme this past year called Greater Things, that we are believing as we transition. And I've had such great leadership before with Pastor Lori Gibbons and then Pastor David Shepard before him. And, and and Pastor Bill Morrow before him, that, 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 that Pastor Laurie felt as he was retiring and transitioning out of being the superintendent, his heart was about greater things, what we could expect in the future ahead. And so this morning, I thought I would come and just share that message. 
it's a tough message in the in the climate that we're in right now. The Omicron virus is is kind of going crazy and things are being shut down. And, and I look back over this last year. In fact, it was a year ago that, that we kind of got shut down completely for the first third of the year. And then the, then we kind of, things opened up, but it's, it's looking a little challenging again. And so I want to speak life into you today and believe God for greater things in the season ahead. As you're entering into this 2022, I believe that, that it's going to be directly related to where you look this year will be about your success. So this morning, I wanna talk to you a little bit about expecting greater things in in the year to come. I believe that greater proximity to Jesus is the secret to greater things moving forward. It's not a better building, it's not a better bank account, it's not a better program, it's not a, a, a better car, it's none of these, or a better job, it's none of these things, but it's, it, it's greater proximity to the Lord that will actually lead us towards greater things in the year ahead. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me this morning to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, and we read this story of the wise men, or the magi, if you will. These wise men or magi, as they're called, uh, there's lots of conversation about who these people were. Where, where are they from? Where exactly? How many were this? Was there three of them? And, and when did they actually show up uh, on scene? We don't know all of those answers, but, but today we actually just look into their mission that they were on. If you have your Bibles, you can turn Matthew chapter 2, and it says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, During the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw the star rose and we've come to worship him. When King Herod heard that, he was disturbed with all Jerusalem with him. Kind of interesting that they were disturbed. Obviously, there's there's news of a new king and he's the king. And so he's asking, what's going on with this? And says that he called together all the chief priests and the teachers of the law. And he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. It's interesting, he pulls together all the, the educated ones of their society, all the leaders of their society and said, okay, what's the deal with this king? What's the deal? We have a problem. It says that, in fact, all of Jerusalem was disturbed by this news. Kind of like today where they're pulling together all the people that are educated and say, what do we do with the news of today? What do we do to, to try and get a hold of this message? And, and how do we, we, we chart a path forward? As they began to research, they said, yeah, in fact, the Messiah was to be born in Bethlehem. And so uh, it says in verse 7, Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out to them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and he said, Go search carefully for this child. As soon as you find him, report back to me so that I can go worship him too. Obviously, he had ill motives and not actually to worship. And after they'd heard from the king, they went on their way and and. The star they had seen when it arose went ahead until it stopped over the place where the child was. Kind of interesting that the Lord often uses these things in the sky in history. Remember the the people of Israel as he led them by fire by night. And and here we have this this cosmic reality that he brings this star uh, to the place where Jesus was born. It says, when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. They, they were so excited. They were, they, they were just pumped at, at what, it, what had happened here. On coming into the house, they saw the child and the mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream to, to not go back to Herod, they returned back to their country by a different route. We see this story of these magi, these wise men on mission to greater things. Once again, I believe that proximity to the Messiah actually will equal greater things in our lives. And if we can get closer to Jesus, great things will be in store for us. And so I want to give you three things real quickly this morning from this story of of the magi. Number one is they persevered on mission. It's been a tough year. It's been a challenging, actually, two years almost uh, with the COVID realities. I believe the moment that we're in doesn't stop the mission that we're on, that in fact, we're to keep moving forward on the mission that God has for us. It, it, it's amazing in this story that, that most scholars would agree that they, they journeyed for over two years in search of this Messiah. 
They persevered through obstacles and and they went through uh, deserts. They went through valleys. They went through uh, challenging hostile territory across mountains to get to this place. It wasn't easy traveling like today's travel would be. They went through obstacles. I don't know what obstacles you're facing right now in your journey, but, but I want to challenge you to persevere through, to keep on moving through. They persevered through opposition. King Herod actually could have killed them. King Herod could have taken them out. King Herod could have ended them. They, they had opposition right there, latent opposition over their lives. But yet, when confronted with the opportunity to turn around, they didn't. And they went forward anyways. Maybe you're facing some opposition. Maybe it's a, a, a boss at work. Maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe it's somebody that's, that, that's been hard on you because of your faith. I want to encourage you to persevere. Persevere through the obstacles, the opposition, through delay. I don't know why God waits. I don't know why God didn't just uh, show up and, and there he was right there. You know what I mean? But a two-year journey for these guys. So many times in our lives, the delay is what gets us. Where it's like, okay, we can run the, we can run the sprint, but the marathon is challenging. I want to encourage you in the midst of challenges to persevere. Some people I, I've met are just like bundles of beginnings. They're just every time the, there's a delay or every time there's an opposition or an obstacle, they just they pack it in and they they fail to, to go through and see the fullness of what God has. I don't know if you're wanting to give up on the mission God has for you to get closer to Jesus, but I want to encourage you today, persevere. I know it's a tough season. I know it's been a challenging time through this COVID time, and, but I want to encourage you to persevere through, to keep on going through opposition, obstacles, delay, to trust Jesus. Galatians 6, 9 says this, and let us not grow weary in doing good for at the proper season we will receive a harvest if we don't give up. Don't give up today. I think of some of our church planters. You know, in, in this past few years, we've actually planted 50 churches over the last uh, five years in WOD. But, but in the midst of even COVID, we've planted 20 new churches. And I think of the perseverance of some of these planters. Jason Randall planting in downtown Toronto. And, and, and every single time he went to open, there'd be a new lockdown. I used to tell him that, you know, every time he was going to start, it was, I, I knew a lockdown was coming. And, and over a year and a half, every single time, they just persevered through and they kept going and lives have been touched and changed. I know people with health challenges that in the midst of it keep persevering. My wife is one of those. She was di diagnosed with a brain tumor years ago and, and she battles through times. She has intense headaches and, and, and walks through challenges but never lets anyone know. She just keeps persevering in the call that God has for her. I wanna challenge you, persevere. Persevere when there's obstacles, when there's opposition, when there's delay. Persevere on the mission God has. If we want to move on to greater things, we've got to persevere on mission. Secondly, I believe we need to stay or be adventurous. Think about these magi for a second. It meant a change of location, a change of culture, a change of thinking, everything they were used to just to simply follow after the star, to get close to the Messiah. What are you willing to adventure out and to get close to Jesus this year? Maybe it's a change of what's comfortable in your journey and a, a change of thinking, a change of, uh, of scenery even. Maybe it's stepping out into something that you're not 100% sure of. I want you to risk this year. I want you to be adventurous. I remember when I was a kid, I was... I was uh, praying, I remember at the altar, it was around a, a church youth group service and I was feeling the call of God over my life and, and I remember wrestling. You ever have those moments where you just wrestle and you, and, and you talk to the Lord and I remember feeling my heart was just pumping like God was calling me to ministry but I wasn't, I wasn't sure, you know, and, and I remember having this conversation with the Lord and I said, God, I want to follow you with my life but I'm just, I don't know, it, it seems like pastoring would be really boring. And I remember praying this prayer. Be careful what you pray sometimes. I, was, I said, Lord, I'll follow you with my life, but just please don't make it boring. <laughs> it 
Sometimes in my life, I wish I could take that one back. There's been moments when I'm, you know, in, in territories. I remember being, Carla and I, in mainland China and having a gun pointed to our head. I remember being in times uh, in Northern Ontario with a moose hit, hitting a moose. And I remember all sorts of moments in the journey. And I, I'm like, Lord, I could handle a little more boring in my life right now. But I want to tell you in your journey that you need to be adventurous and trust God. Think of these wise men. They, they moved culture. This is a two-year journey. They, they went through crazy territory and location. Everything they knew got disrupted. Every point of their agenda got thrown out in order to seek after this Messiah. In your journey, I want to encourage you today to continue to stay adventurous, to be risky for what God has in store for you. Persevere on mission. Be adventurous for what God has for you. Psalm 121 says this, I lift my eyes to the hill. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. He who watches over you doesn't sleep or slumber. In the midst of challenges, get your eyes off the problem. Begin to look to the Lord. Begin to look to the light, if you will, and follow after him and trust the adventure that he has over your lives. This past week, I was talking with one of our pastors uh, who, who's, uh, who's actually gone back to, to Pakistan and he's, he's ministering here in Canada. He's off into Pakistan and, and man, he's, he's in hostile territory in some ways, places that are, that are not excited about the gospel coming, but he's pushing forward. And he said, Jay, just pray God's protection as I ride this journey. I wanna encourage that over all of us to continue to ride the journey that God has for us. Persevere on mission, be adventurous. And then finally this morning, honor during the hard seasons. I wanna challenge you in the midst of hard seasons, these, these wise men, I love the example that they, they set. They stayed unified. In the midst of challenging seasons, that they, they were with their team and they could have easily just decided to, to turn on one another. If one of them had, Herod probably would have taken them all out, but they chose in the midst of hard seasons to stay unified. They spoke well of one another. They honored during the hard seasons. I think it's amazing here. Here's Herod, this tyrannical king, ready to, to commit a genocide over a people and kill all these ones and just bloodthirsty, but yet they didn't get signs and pick at him. They didn't, they didn't write social media campaigns against Herod. No, they actually spoke well and honored even an evil king. honor. Something I think in our churches these days we need more of. They were generous to the Christ child. They came with these gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and very prophetic gifts, a gift to a king, the gold, the frankincense, a gift for a priest, the myrrh, a uh, uh, prophetic uh, utterance over that he would be a Messiah giving up his life. They took these valuable gifts on a two-year journey. Think about that for a moment, that they carried them with them through highs and lows, over, over valleys and over mountains, and all throughout the journey that they would come and honor somebody not from their culture and a young baby. We need to be people that speak honor. Uh, sadly to say, I see the church too often as the ones who are speaking such negativity and we're posting things online and we're dishonoring leaders all over the place. Uh, it actually says this, listen to this in Romans 12, 10. It says, love one another with brotherly affection, outdo one another in showing honor. It's like one of the only times in scripture that it actually gives us permission to be really competitive with one another and try and beat each other at something. It's, it's to, to outdo one another in showing honor. What if we began to live like that this year? See, I think the gateway to, to really finding God's purpose is often walks through a doorway of humility and honor. I want to encourage you as a church to be a church of honor, to, to speak well of those around us, even those that we disagree with. Even if, they're, even if they're evil, we can still show honor in ways. Persevere on mission today. Be adventurous and honor others around. And I believe God will take us towards greater things. 
as we wrap up 2021 and a challenging year, and we look forward to 2022, I do believe it was a prophetic word that Pastor Lori spoke over, over our uh, district to say that he's believing for greater things. And I, as I walk and, and learn uh, this next season ahead, I'm believing that God's going to do great things. I believe it's in the midst of moments like that where we're seeing probably the biggest shakeup the church has seen in, in my lifetime for sure. It's important that we get close to Jesus. It's important that we continue to seek after him like these wise men came from a far distance and sought the Lord. I want to challenge you. Seek him this Christmas season, this New Year's season, into 2022, that we would, we would be on mission for greater things ahead, to persevere when it's tough, to stay adventurous and to, to be committed to, 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 to really going after it, whatever it looks like, and then to honor people around us and see what God will do. It's an honor to be serving you as your new superintendent. I got lots to learn in this next season, but I believe that we have a great team around us and, and we're committed to see God do incredible things. So why don't you pray with us today? Let's pray. Mighty God, as we enter into 2022, Lord, with an uncertainty ahead of us, we have a certainty in you. Lord, that you are a faithful God. Lord, I say thank you that when we get closer to you, great things happen. Lord, when our proximity is, is tight and close to you, we can trust you for great things. So God, God as we, we, we push into 2022, Lord, I, I pray that uh, there'd be a persistence. Those who are there that are, are wanting to just give up at this moment, Lord, that we wouldn't give up, that we would persevere through. Lord, for those who are your calling to just set out and, and to trust and follow you, Lord, maybe they've been fearful to, to risk, to, to go on the adventure that you have, this, this calling that you have over their lives. I pray that today, God, we would trust you, even if it's a change of location, even if it's a change of culture, even if it's a change of, of schedule and all these things like these magi chose. And then finally, God, help us to be a people of honor. Lord, that we would sacrificially honor, that we'd be generous, that we'd speak well of those around us, that, that God, we would build a culture, Lord, around us, that we, 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 we speak well in life of those around us. So God, as we go into 2022, God, our desire for greater things is really a desire for you to be close to you, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen.